Hello and welcome to my channel on human design. For those of you new to the channel, my name is Richard Beaumont. I've been uh, in human design for 25 years and about two decades of that I've been training a professional analyst. And here I'm here to share what I know to you in these videos and today we're going to be looking at self-worth and in particular the open will. So what do we know about that? We know that there are 65% of people who have an open will, 65%. So that is, a, that is a massive proportion of the population. And the way I see things, it is one of, the, um, one of the main causes of having an unhappy life is our relationship with our open will. And I also have an open will. So I want to start off by asking you a simple question. How much are you worth to yourself? How much are you worth to yourself? The idea of worth is framed by the fixed wills that are in the world. And they have a willpower. They have a real power that they can put out and it's very impressive when they do. I mean, it's not something that they can keep on doing, but, you know, when they push it out, I'm always impressed by it. It is, in, it is a very impressive power, and we don't have it. Okay, so what happens when we get into auric contact with such people? We are going to amplify their will. They're going to get all pumped up, and we're going to start overemphasizing the willpower we're going to boast we're going to promise we're going to go yes i could do that by thursday no problem you know and you walk away from that open will person and you go oh no what have i just agreed to that's going to take forever and i've got to do it by thursday I, i've got to cancel everything you know so the very act of being unconscious when you're around uh, fixed will people there's always going to be a cost to pay. There's always going to be a cost to pay because you're going to be taking on things to prove yourself. And very often that involves time and, and money. In the background, we have the, um, the corporations selling us all kinds of material things, you know, and telling us we've got to, you know, we must have them. Every family must have them. Every person must have them. So we have to generate money for all kinds of stuff that isn't really um, essential in any way, but it is in terms of puffing ourselves up. So we get caught. We are the salesman's dream and the salesman saleswoman comes from the 26th game. It's in the will. We also have a lot of competition in the schooling system, or at least there used to be. So again, there is this background uh, thinking going on, well, I've got to measure up, you know? I've got to succeed and, 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 and be the best. Be the best, be the best. Have you any idea how much energy it's going to take to be the best? Well, those that, you know, get to that place and then they come down and then they go up, etc. they know what it takes. It's the main thing isn't trying to be the best. The main thing is to actually recognize that the open will doesn't have a strong sense of self-esteem. We experience ourselves in a kind of lack, you know, oh, well, you know, we're not worth, we're not worth that much, you know. Ra uses the example of going for a job and the job is offered and uh, the open will goes on, it goes in and says, well, how much is the salary? Well, the salary is that much. Okay. And they take the job. The will person comes and says, how much is the salary? And they go, what? I'm not, I'm not getting out of bed for that. You've got to give me at least double before I'll even consider the job. You know, okay, well, you must be really important. You know, we, you must really be worth it. You know, we'll pay you more. So one of the ways you can see the imbalance and the misery that comes in life is that open will people don't really get what they're really worth. They get what, they're, what they'll accept and they will accept less than they're worth, which is why I asked the question at the beginning, what are you worth to yourself? Okay, what are you worth to a company is one thing. What are you worth to a, to a lover is one thing. What are you worth to your family is one thing. 
What are you worth to yourself? I want you to think about the relationship of the will to the world. And the will is a, it's about tribe, it's about resources, it's about community, it's about control, it's about the king and the queen, and it's about material. So there is this material aspect in life where it all gets twisted, where people who are opened will try to measure themselves because the mind is always measuring. And when you think about it, money is a not self concept to begin with. So you're now measuring your self worth against money. So that leads to all kinds of I guess I'd call it mental mental illness, really, you know, trying to find your self worth by accumulating material things by the um, the money you spend on presents, you know, trying to prove your love by spending more. Um, it gets out of order, feeling feeling depressed because you haven't got enough to be able to show what you really can be. Um, trying to compete with uh, willful people in terms of just in the way that you run your life. I mean, think about all the times you can put yourself down. And one of them for sure is going to be the will's ability to use their will to keep regular on something. You know, I'm going to give up smoking, you know, and their will goes, I will give up smoking. And they won't you know, it, it is humiliating for a will person to not uh, keep their word in something like that. So they will be regular. We try to do that, you know? We try to, yes, I'm gonna take these pills every day. I'm gonna do this exercise every day. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. I will, I will, I will, I will. No, you won't. No, you won't. You just won't. You won't be able to. It's not your job to be regular in that sense. It's their job. They have to prove themselves. And we end up amplifying that and to our own detriment. Think about what it's like to have a low self-esteem and to be dependent on other people's judgments about what we are worth. You know, we don't know. We don't know. It's very difficult for a, um, an open will person to know how much to charge. I mean, we often get that wrong. We usually charge lower than, than the will people because we don't know, we really don't know. And the will people, of course, can exaggerate their self-worth. Yes, I'm gonna charge this much because I'm worth it. And I know I am. And they might not be, it might not be good value for money. So again, there is this these things to consider in your own life. And I know I've covered a lot of different concepts, but I want you to really think about it. And more than that, the takeaway from uh, this video is I want you to look and see where you are really valuable to yourself. You know, if you are if you are a um, a collective person, so you have a lot of the collective circuitry. You know, your 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 self worth is in your experience. In the fact that you've experienced so many things and you've you know you've got a lot of experiential knowledge to give you've got a lot of wisdom to give through what you've been through you've got a lot of stories to tell in 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 sharing the experiences that you've had there are so many different wonderful um ways to teach others through our experience if you're mainly a logical person with logical circuitry then you have your preciseness and you have your you have your um, your patterns to share you have ways to improve the functionality of other people's lives there are so many useful things that come out of logical circuitry absolutely fundamentally vital and lots of people don't have that you know, and they need you to help bring in the systems, to help organize them, to help point out what, what doesn't work, you know, and find a solution, to help improve things. So many things. If you're a individual, if you're largely individual, there may be self-value in you that is, well, there will be self-value in you that is creative, that is mutative that often moves towards the beauty, towards the art, towards the poetry, 
towards the architecture, all kinds of things that individuals have to the music, to the, to the endless beauties that can come out of the individual, the oddness, the quirkiness, you know, the one-offness. Um, there are so many things that people have in them that other individuals will empower when they see it because they love the difference. So it's not about trying to fit into, you know, a round peg trying to fit into a square hole. Whenever you've got an open will and you're trying to prove yourself, you're trying to fit a round hole into a square, a round peg into a square hole, and it isn't going to work. It's not going to be comfortable. Um, you'll end up getting less money. You'll end up having a, a life, even if you make a lot of money, it will not be rich because it will not be you that's in the life. It'll be you poncing around, posturing, posturing with this and that. You know, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Um, what happens to a lot of people is in trying to prove themselves materially, they get into debt, which creates a lot more problems. Um, there are so many different things. And I want to say something else to you, and this is quite a big thing. When you think about what the will is and that it's tied to community and it's tied to a, um, a tribal structure, if you don't actually have a fixed will in your life, then there, there may not be this sense of belonging that you think, well, I don't belong here and I don't belong there. I'll be part of this or part of that and still longing for it and still trying to make that happen. Like in all deconditioning, it's mainly about letting it go. It's mainly about coming back to who you are and letting go all the falseness. And the open will creates so many problems for itself because it doesn't understand. And I hope for this, uh, for this brief film, I've given you some, some different clues and tricks to look into to assess in your own way, in your own life, in your own relationships, in, in what you're doing in your life to find your self-worth. When you find your self-worth, you are going to receive what you need to receive and more as a natural byproduct of just being you. And I have seen that so many times with so many unusual artists, for example, that you know are not mainstream, but they've got their own niche market because they are, it's wonderful what they do and people love it. You know, it's not about trying to compete with, you know, the main corporations and all the trickery and all the uh, nonsense that goes on with that. Come back to yourself, follow your strategy and authority, look at your charts, see where there is great value in you and live it. And don't worry about the rest and don't get involved with competition and love your life, love being who you are, that'll bring you the self-value. And then when you ask the question, how much are you worth to yourself? You have a different answer. There is only you. You are absolutely priceless. And I want you to know that. And I want you to live knowing that. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to build up my subscribers and share and see if you can help other people with this information. Okay, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again very soon. Bye for now.